Well, how you doing, Copper? What's up? What's up, Booski? How you doing? All right, so we've got some new products in today. We actually got a couple of packages. We're gonna do one thing at a time. First, I'm actually gonna start with this package. This was from Tag Trains. This is a pre-order I placed uh, probably a year or so ago. Uh, with any luck, we've got some Walters and some Athen in here. So let's take it out and have a look. All right, so first thing we have out of the box here that we're gonna take a look at is this SD40 from Atherin Trains. Uh, the, this is the Ready to Roll Economy Sound and DCC with LED lights. This is Utah Railway, SD40 number 9006. So I initially ordered this because um, I saw a photo of one of these patched for Wisconsin and Southern and I thought that's what I'd do with it. Well, now that I'm starting to back out and kind of get into auto racing a little bit more, um, I'm probably going to sell this guy. So if this is something you're interested in, hit me up in the comments um, and or message me or PM me on Facebook or comment on the video link of this on Facebook because I will have it in there as well. Um, here we've got a bunch of extra detail parts. Um, I I've never done anything with those, so I honestly don't know if uh, they still need to be applied or if they're just spares. So we'll get the boxes off to the side here. We got our blister packaging, or clamshell, I should say. I think that's what everyone's calling it these days. And then underneath, we have a perfectly shipped, in theory, Utah railway locomotive, or Utah belt. Railway or belt? Utah railway. So we'll put everything back in here as nicely as we can. <clears throat> Kind of tight in there. Next, we'll get the foam out. Again, you want to be real gentle with this. You don't want to break any handrails and you don't want to bust off any detail parts. But that's one thing that's nicer about um, the Ready to Roll is that there's a little less to break off. So, let me get this up on the turntable and let's take a look. So, I want to forewarn you, if you hear something munching and crunching, it's not me, it's the dog. He's got a stick he's chewing on, and that's keeping him busy, so I'm going to take it. So, this is an excellent example of the SD40 from Scale Trains. It's got nice detail to it, especially for the price, which comes in at $229.98. They are currently out of stock, um, and you can... Uh, I purchased this from Tag Trains for $171.99, so if you didn't pre-order this, you're probably not going to get one unless you can find one in stock. Um, again, I recommend Tag Trains if they have any available yet. But as we go around, we've got a nice side-mounted bell here. Um, I'm a big fan of the side-mounted bells. You don't really get to see it underneath. I always like to see it on the front, and as you'll see on some of the Canadian stuff, but on the side here, it's nice and prevalent. You get a nice touch. Um, here, it looks like we have working ditch lights. I can see the uh, LEDs in there. Uh, you got all your MU hoses here, which have a nice little bit of play to them, so they're not going to break off as easily. You got your nice number boards put in there very neatly. They're not uh, slopping off or off to one side, uh, from what I can see. Semi-scale McHenry couplers that will be coming out and putting in a, a semi-scale uh, KD. Even if I'm selling this, I'm going to put KDs on it because that's probably what anyone else is going to do. Um, You've got the thinner, slimmer sunshades on here, not those really big ones that come down. Um, so that's probably a prototype detail. I don't think they get too crazy on the prototype details on the Athen Ready to Roll, um, but it's kind of nice to see on here. Coming to this side, you can see everything's just about the same. Um, as far as detail, you just don't have a bell over here, but you've got some nice panel decoration up here with the decal patch. Of course, you don't have any see-through details except when you get to the top to the fans, which we'll get to, and the exhaust. Um, there's just not a whole lot going on on this. This doesn't have a lot of crazy uh, detail in here. The walkways are smooth. Um, there's no um, 
diamond plate or any texture to them. The steps aren't see-through, those are cast. Um, so I mean, it's an Athen ready to roll. I mean, you get what you pay for. Uh, if you ask me, $230 for this is asking a lot considering I can buy a scale trains um, SD40-2 uh, for um, 250 I mean, yeah, that's the scale train sale price, but I mean, you used to be able to get ready to roll for less than 100 bucks. Uh, I understand this has sound and whatnot, but I, I just feel like the prices are getting a little up there in the hobby, and that's another reason for me to kind of back away. So one thing I do want to point out on the trucks here is, a, I don't know if these are steerable trucks or not. Uh, I'm not a truck expert. Uh, you have some nice detail down here with the speed recorders, the brakes and whatnot, and then some mechanisms up here um, uh, for these guys. And uh, everything looks real nice. There's a nice touch to those trucks. And of course you can look underneath here in the reflection a little bit. I'm not sure if you guys can make that out. But underneath the truck here in between the tank and the fuel truck there's not hardly any detail. So not like a scale trains where you got piping everywhere of course. Again this is a ready to run. Um, but on the back here we can see you've got some nice separately applied uh, grab irons. And of course you've got the windshield wiper over here. But you've got the brake wheel on the back um, that's not up on the nose like some other units. And then you've got your um, uh, other hoses back here. Uh, the handrails in this, on this one are in pretty good shape. There's a little bit of a lean to these, but usually when I get an Athern ready to roll, um, uh, something's bent way out of whack. Now I know on this guy, this is a little out, and it looks like this guy might be sticking out just a little bit. Just give that a couple of taps. Um, but this is probably just the plastic that was covering it. This would be easy enough to just bend out of place a little bit. Um, just kind of give it a little bend back. I'm not too worried about it. And again, you've got your uh, sand filler here, uh, nice little horn. LED lights, of course, now com uh, coming on all the Atherton products. And then I can see a little um, part here that looks like uh, where the sprue mark is for the head or for the ditch light. I think you can just make it out right there. Um, again, not a big deal if, if it's bothering you that much. You can either add weathering to take care of that, or you can just snip it off um, or sand it a little bit. So, overall, not a bad looking unit. Um, you've got your wind deflectors up here. Looks like this guy's coming off a little bit on the side. You can see they've added more glue. This guy's coming out a little bit over here. Again, a very common issue on, this, on anything that's getting shipped long distances seeing a variety of heat ranges and temperatures and humidities all this stuff is going to move a little bit especially the thinner railings they have just a little bit more elasticity to them um, so let's reposition the camera and let's take a look up from top all right so now we can see the fans a little bit better and the exhaust up here and then uh, whatever this is I, i'm I'll be the first to tell you I'm not the most familiar with what's what on a locomotive. Um, but you can see you don't have any lift rings on here. Um, there's just a skate antenna. This is an older locomotive. This doesn't have a PTC or anything on there. But if you do look for stuff like that, check out MacRail products. I just got a bunch of their, um, or three of their EOTs for my Sergeant Couplers that I'm testing out. Uh, and they fit great. Uh, so you can see over here there's a little something, just a little foam looks like. Uh, maybe from packaging or shipping or something. And then you can see where there's holes that you could easily drill to put eyelets in for uh, lift lugs if you're looking for that. And of course you can see the sand filler hatch, you can see the grab iron up here, a nice little three chime antenna. Uh, some really good spots for weathering, a lot, I see a lot is just to darken these up a little bit so you can see it's getting used, obviously around the exhaust. Um, but overall, you know, it's it's a pretty simple locomotive, not crazy amounts of detail. You got the grab iron back here and some really nice fans. So after and even on the ready to roll stuff, you still get the separately applied fans, which of course look really nice. It's a more affordable way to get something with some de decent detail that you're not worried about destroying uh, when you're operating or something. Uh, I know if Dave were here, he'd be telling you how nice it is to have something that you're not so concerned about operating. If you get a derailment or something, you're not going to see the damage on this that you would on a more expensive model. So with that out of the way, uh, actually let's see if we can see the... I want to show you guys the number boards here a little bit more. So one thing I've noticed a lot lately, um, particularly on other brands, but this used to be a big problem for Atherin, is that these number boards would come in either off to the side, not square, not flush. Um, 
or just off the model entirely. They use some tacky substance that holds them on and they can adjust it. The problem is, is it doesn't always stay in place. So um, whoever assembled this did a, did a really good job. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to see those number boards in place. Uh, I got a lot of scale trains and other models that have those just a little off. All you got to do is just adjust it a little bit, but um, it's nice to see them in place. And of course, you can see the windshield wipers here. Very, very fine detail. Um, and honestly, I'm kind of surprised to see those on a ready to roll, but I like the way that Athens kind of stepped up the ready to roll um, quality a little bit. So we're going to throw this on the track and uh, let's test out the sound. Alright, so we've got a locomotive on the tracks, and of course it's Tsunami, so it starts up as soon as we put it on. Therefore, to get the startup sounds, we need to turn the power off to the layout. Wait a moment, and fire it up. So with this just being an uh, Eco 90 decoder, there isn't a whole lot going on here. Um, and I'll put down in the bottom right hand corner a picture of the decoder function assignments. But it's pretty standard, head up and uh, headlight reverse, um, bell, horn, short horn, um, dynamic brakes or straight to idle for F4, and the lighting effects for 5 and 6 if equipped, F7 is the dimmer, F8 is mute. And then of course after that you've got brake, um, F11 for the brakes. So, with that said, um, and there's a few functions above that, but I'm not going to get into those. So with that, let's give it a little test. Alright, so we don't have flashing ditch lights on this. I'm not sure if that's the prototype or not, but I'm sure that it is. One speed step forward. Uh, we've got a nice jump there. Um, let's go to 128 speed steps in reverse and see what one speed step does there. That's much smoother. So there's actually a good amount of volume uh, to this little locomotive, especially for an Eco 9. Uh, I'd be happy to have this on my layout. It's not as loud as some of the Tsunami 2s, the 28mm speakers that you see in the column units. Um, but it's it's got plenty of volume, I think, for me or uh, most other people. Uh, unless you've got to have something to hear over all the people at the train shows or swap meets. Uh, so without any further ado, let's hook up to this train and take a load around.
it definitely picked up some speed coming down that hill and it definitely had a little a uh, little more trouble going up the other one of course you got the whole train pushing you I know uh, with some of the better decoders they do a little bit more uh, help for keeping the speed the same I was kind of hoping that Ekonomi decoders had that but it doesn't look like it and this is definitely the steeper of the two grades And you can really see it slowing down. Alright, so it went around the layout just fine, no issues, so what I'm going to do is a little light programming here just to bring the sound down a little bit, and then uh, we'll work on that momentum a bit, see if we can't smooth it out on 28 speed steps. Alright, so we did some basic programming, uh, basically I programmed the road number, I put in a uh, uh, value of 50 for CB3 and 4 to bring down the sound, or bring down, or bring up the momentum. Um, I like prefer to operate it at 28 speed steps when I'm using my throttle, um, my hammerhead for, that the NC power cab comes with, and then for the volume I put 100, uh, CB128 and 129 to a value of 50 as well, and that brought it down considerably to a much more manageable level. So with that said, um, let's do a little pan around. So this is speed step one now, and uh, while well, speed step one is still a little quick, um, quicker than I'm used to anyways, I think it'll work. So I'm going to run this around a little bit more, and we're going to see what it's like after a little braking period. So overall, I did a little switching. I uh, ran it around a half dozen times, ran it through some different tracks, and I didn't have any issues. There were no derailments. There is no um, jumping or stuttering or anything. The lights didn't flicker. Uh, so it means, A, I've got good track, and two, this has good wiring. I know sometimes that there's a wire missed here or there in one of the trucks or the solder broke in shipping or just from use. And uh, so this one seems to be in really good shape. So I'm really happy with that. Uh, the slow... Uh, the slow speed operation seems to work pretty nice, especially at 128 speed steps. Uh, it's really smooth, it's nice and crisp. Uh, again, the biggest um, issue I have with this locomotive is the back EMF. And uh, there's, uh, there's some information about it if you go online, but there isn't a whole lot. Uh, I'm not sure that this model has it. I'm not sure how to turn it on. I didn't see anything that was uh, explaining that. So I'm going to assume that this doesn't have it. Uh, like some of the higher end decoders, like a regular Tsunami or a Tsunami 2 or a Loke Sound uh, 5 decoder. Um, so I, I'd say this is a good entry level or a mid level locomotive. Um, a, a pretty good value, I think, under $200 with sound. And again, it, it's, there isn't a ton of detail, so there's not a lot to break off. One thing I will note, and this is an issue for a lot of Athen locomotives with plows, is the plow blade is a little low. Um, this one and a handful of other Athern locomotives have a couple issues. If you have any difference in track height at a joint and there's a gap, even if there isn't a gap, it's probably going to get caught in there. Um, and it's just kind of annoying. Uh, so it happened on the bridge, and I thought maybe the plod broke off, but it just kind of moved a little bit uh, and just kept on going. Uh, so if I were to keep this, I'd probably shave that down a little bit. Uh, so other than that, I think it's overall it's a good locomotive for the price, a good level of detail. Uh, the sound is really nice out of it, uh, and again, the slow motion or the slow speed operation of this is pretty nice. So, we'll back out of here at one speed step at 128. 
Um, something else that's really nice with switching with six axles is you have more power pickup over a longer distance. So with a four axle, of course, it's a shorter wheelbase, and you've only got eight points of pickup, um, whereas this you have 12. So it's really nice to have that spread over switches. Um, even if you have power feeders everywhere, that frog does make a difference. And like I said, sometimes you have a truck that the wire doesn't reach, or the connection isn't great, or it's a press-on um, fitting like a lot of the boards have from Athlon locomotives. They're not actually soldered. Um, if the wire is broken inside, whatever it may be, sometimes that's an issue. So with that said, uh, I would say that this is overall a good locomotive. If you're looking at purchasing one, um, check out Tag Trains, your local retailer. Uh, let me know what your experience has been. And, of course, as soon as I say it, I stop and uh, my power dies. So, lights are out and whatnot, but the tsunami, at least the sound comes back on. So, again, with that said, uh, let me know what you guys think. If you guys purchased one or have one on order and you're waiting to get it, let me know down in the comments. Otherwise, you guys have a great weekend, and we'll see you in the next video.